Hello and welcome to Stray Thoughts. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about people pleasers and how ultimately they are my favorite type of people in the world and not for obvious reasons. Um, if you're not familiar with the idea, uh, let's go with a quick definition. People pleasers tend to do anything possible to not be able to read this on the screen. Here we go tend to do anything possible to avoid conflict, even if it means turning into an entirely different person. There's another definition down below that says it, a people-pleaser personality means a person feels a strong urge to please others, even at their own expense. And you would think maybe that's why I like people-pleasers, because they'll just do anything I say. But the fact is, this is my least favorite thing about them. What I love about people who tend to have this trait is that they have big hearts, they're very generous, they're very um, very pro-social. They just want people to get along and things to work out. The problem is that this pattern of behavior can cause problems of its own. For me, I get very frustrated because I would much rather a person tell me where it's at and let me know what the issue is rather than saying what they think I want to hear. The only thing I really want to hear is the truth, unless it's about time, because I run late and you can always lie to me about the time. Everything else, lay it on me, give me the ugly truth. Any day I will choose the ugly truth, because at least then <clears throat> I have a, a working map of reality. I can look at it and say, okay, this is how this is, that's how that is, this is how it comes together, and these are the choices I need to make, or the action I need to take. <clears throat> Here we go. My throat's already closing. I brought a little tea for the occasion. Mm-hmm. Mm. Slurping her tea. We're off to a strong, sm strong start. <laughs> strong smart? No. No smart. Weak smart. Big slurps. Okay, let's press on, shall we? Um, the reason I really love these people, though, is that they, they are looking to create a court. It's just the way in which we go about it can create a whole new world of problems. I also hate the idea of people losing themselves for the sake of trying to make my day better. That doesn't make my day better. I'd like to know people as who they really are, and I feel that I'm... I'm being deprived of that opportunity when a person feels that they have to filter and frame and present everything according to their best guess of what it is I might want. I don't want that. I can say that. And so I think about this quite a bit. And reflecting upon it, I realize that there are certain scenarios where my own tendencies show through. Usually it's in the gray area. If things are good, we're good. If things there's a problem, let's handle it. I'm ready to handle a problem. It's in the gray areas. I get a little soft. And I have another issue, which is the reason why I need this tea. I'm, I'm very camera shy. I've mentioned this a few times and part of my nerves, my throat closes up. So hmm. see a little, a little less slurping. Um, <laughs> now with less slurping, welcome to my production. Are we having fun yet? All fun aside, one of the things for me is resisting the impulse to really over edit and change the way I present because I'm self-conscious and I'm naturally going to want to come off the right way. But in that, I will lose a certain amount of my, my silliness, my quirkiness, who I am. And I don't feel that I'm being real with myself or others when I do that. And so I guess I feel like we owe it to each other to bring the most of the best of what's real about us as much as we possibly can. Now, we live in polite society and we have to manage this to a point, but I think we know when we've crossed a line and we've started to deny or suppress things about ourselves and we do what we have to do. We go along to get along and then we end up paying the cost in in, in losing ourselves, in ending up in situations that aren't good for us, promising things we can't deliver on, creating conflict, confusion. There are any number of things that come from operating 
from a place that is not rooted in reality. And it's not just that we as individuals doing this have to pay for it. It's that other people around us actually end up having to shoulder a share of the consequence. Other people will also have to try and make their best guess and navigate what we're saying if over time we've shown that our, our words and our deeds don't align. That puts a burden of, of interpreting and, and guesstimating with, with a person if it's not entirely clear, it's not reliable. And so in the short term, it feels like we're doing a nice thing by saying like, oh, yeah, yeah, sure, I can help you out with that. But then if a person's depending on that and we don't show up, they're in a worse position than if we had actually just honestly said, I'd love to, but I can't. And so this is an example of how this is problematic. And it relates to me doing this because, not because I'm over-promising anything, it's it's a little different in my, my experience here because I'm afraid I'm going to let that part of me take over and drive me to be a more disingenuous, more artificial version of myself. Again, when we're dealing with others, we're always going to put a little polish on it. We're always going to apply some filters and some restraint and some care, but not at the expense of, of being who we are and being in our own reality and conveying that clearly and effectively to others. Um, but to do this, I'm... I'm I really do have to struggle against that very natural, very common impulse to to kind of make it work for other people. But in the long run, I know that doesn't work. And so you get me here being silly and slurping my tea. And here we are. And being here and wanting to crawl out of my skin and run away rather than record this, I have to remind myself that most people don't really register or or care or retain the, the things that I might be very self-conscious of. Most people are so caught up in their own insecurities, concerns, drives, fears, they don't even really notice. And so I just have to remind myself that most people are struggling in their own right and that it's not, it's, this isn't the spotlight's not really on me, even though right now, in this moment, I am presenting this way. Odds are, if I've made a mistake, it's it's just going to vanish back into the ether as soon as the video ends. And if there's a chance that something I say here could be of value to somebody else, I feel that I need to push past my own discomfort, get over myself, and get on with it because we all have something to offer. We've all had experiences. We've all learned lessons. We all have something to impart, something to create and to share. And that we're doing a disservice to others by holding that back for fear of looking stupid. I can assure you what is stupid is wasting the gifts we've been given with what little time we do have in this life. I can't tell you how many times I've been able to tune into YouTube and listen to other people sharing what they have to, to offer and really benefiting from it in ways that I don't think the, the individuals presenting these, these ideas could even imagine. In some cases, it's been life-altering for me. It's not fair to hold that back in a way of supposedly protecting ourselves, but we're cheating ourselves as well. And I, I shudder to think of where I would be if other people hadn't come out and said what they had to say about things, when I know some of them are not entirely comfortable doing that either. Um, it's, it, we all have our doubts, our insecurities. Um, it was something Mark Manson said that I actually want to get into at greater depth, but he had said something about how everybody out working in the self-help space, self-improvement, are all basically giving the advice that at one point they needed to hear. And it's because they too are flawed people. 
and in owning and embracing those flaws and working with them and mining something good from that process that they could bring forth and then bringing that out to share with others that I personally have benefited tremendously and I know other people who can tell the same story that they just happened upon a video one day and it completely changed their perspective or their approach and that where it got them to was beyond their wildest imaginings and I, I don't want to imagine a world in which we are so busy trying to please other people that we end up cheating ourselves and others out of the gifts that we do have to offer and so beyond beyond the the general issues of people pleasing i think there's a more subtle issue that people who maybe don't identify as having that struggle still have aspects of that we still edit and filter ourselves into non-existence it's it's just nothing get nothing ends up passing through the the sieve and that yields nothing and why are we here if we're not even trying to produce something of value connect share experience these things together and we can't do it if we're hiding behind our, our masks trying to be perfect people that none of us are perfect no one here is getting it right nobody knows what they're doing we're all like just winging it doing our best and if we can look at ourselves and each other and remember that and come with kindness and and acceptance i think there's so much more that we can we can mine out of our life experience in talking with a friend earlier today it occurred to me that this comes from a very deep and common place because once upon a time our survival depended on us being able to find safety in numbers and the fear was if we were um, rejected and exiled from our tribe we would be pushed out into harsh survival conditions with very poor odds and so wanting to secure our place within the tribe is a good and strong survival instinct there's nothing wrong with that there's there's no shame in wanting to feel secure among our people and to keep accord this is again part of what i love about people who struggle with this oh there goes my alarm excuse me let's clear that um yeah and it's 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 a good instinct but it's maladaptive in the modern world we're not going to be left to fend off hyenas or left without um, food or shelter because we've we've offended somebody and i think that that deep primal part of us that evolved under those conditions hasn't really gotten the memo yet and i think maybe there's a little bit of an update we need to apply and saying look even if I am completely rejected and exiled, there will be pain with that. I have, I have accepted that path for myself, and it sucks. I'm not recommending it. But if it's between that and losing who I am, losing my freedom, losing my power, losing my ability to operate as a whole person in the world and contribute my share, because again, there's a strong drive for contribution. And it's, it's that drive that pushes me out here to say I've, I've garnered so much from other people coming out and and sharing their ideas and I feel that I kind of owe it and that got me thinking about another point which is that we often wonder if it's okay to say no to something or to stand our ground or put someone in their place when they're really out of line with us and first of all yes it's absolutely okay we we have a right to do this we have a right to have and enforce our own boundaries with others assuming it's civilized conditions i mean maybe you don't want to try this if some tyrannical regime rolls through and puts us in work camps but that's not where we are and that's what i'm saying is that we really do have a lot more freedom and power to be real in the modern paradigm than we've ever experienced as as a species and it would be nice if we could capitalize on that and sort of put in some updates that say it could suck, it could hurt, 
but I'll be okay. I will actually survive this. It's I'm I'm not going to be thrown out into the harsh wilderness to fend for myself. It'll just feel that way for a little while until I get the ground under me again. And I've had to do this a few times in my life, and it turns out I keep getting the ground under me. So it's possible. It's at least possible. And in knowing that it's possible to recover from a worst-case scenario, um, I think that that really reaffirms my assertion that we we do have a right to stand our ground with things, with with you know enforcing our boundaries with others. As much as I say good boundaries are something we have and hold with ourselves, it's it's about not being able to get knocked off of our stance by other people and it's more than a right ultimately i really believe it's a responsibility because of what i say here that we all have something to bring forth and when we edit deny suppress those aspects of us we're costing everybody the benefit that we can't even estimate like i said the the people who have imparted knowledge to me in the past, wisdom, insight, tools. It's, I don't know where I'd be without that. And if they had allowed themselves to be cowed and, and back down from the work of bringing that out where I could find it, where other people could access it, it would have cost us all in ways that you, you couldn't even have imagined. It's hard to even calculate the benefit knowing that it has had such benefit, but in, in falling short of that, we are costing ourselves and others what it is we have to, to contribute. And it's, again, a way in which everybody shoulders the burden of that consequence, that it, it's, not, it's not just about us. It's really not just about us. When we shortchange ourselves when we fall short of being who we are, when we don't have the courage of our convictions to deliver on what we feel bursting from inside of us. We're costing everybody the benefit of that. And so to all my beloved people-pleasing people out there, I hope that this is a, a, a shift in perspective that might help in resolving the struggles there and for those who don't identify as having these issues to maybe see where we do fall into these tendencies otherwise and and really appreciate the the total cost to zoom out and see that it's not just about keeping our heads down so we don't get in trouble it's it's about pulling pulling the, the whole average down with us because of what we don't deliver on. And so here I am trying to deliver on what would be lost if I were to give in to my insecurities and doubts, and I am hoping it is of some value. It was of interest to me, and I thought I would invite you along to play with these ideas as well. I hope they are of some benefit. As always, I do really appreciate you coming along and taking the ride with me, and I, I do hope that there's something in here that helps shift our thinking a little bit and brings us up to speed with the modern realities and the knowledge that we have more than a right to have and enforce boundaries, that we have more than a right to be who we are and bring what we have to offer we actually have a responsibility and I don't know if that just puts more pressure or not but it does help me to think that I'm basically I guess failing to contribute my share and so I let my drive for contribution run stronger than my urge to run and hide However, it is getting on time for me to run, but before I go, I want to thank you again for coming along with me through all my doubts and insecurities fumbling through this, and uh, I look forward to exploring more of these ideas further in the next round. 
Until then, I wish you all the best. Take care.